Hello children, we are doing angles and their properties, exercise 18D and we are going to work out questions 2 and 3. Question 2. If angle 1 equals 120 degrees, find the measures of angles 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. And we need to give reasons. Okay, so let's start. Angle 1 as it's given the question is 120 degrees. Now we need to find angle 2 first. Let's see how 2 is related to angle 1. As you can see, both these angles, angles 1 and 2, are on the same straight line. And that means they are adjacent angles and the sum of adjacent angles on a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. That means they are a linear pair of angles. So we're going to start by finding angle 2 and the reason is linear pair of angles. That means angle 2 plus angle 1 should give us 180 degrees. So let's find out angle 2. Angle 1 is given to us. It's 120 degrees. Together they are equal to 180 degrees. To find angle 2, we leave it on the left hand side. On the right, we leave 180 degrees and we're going to move this 120 degrees from the left hand side to the right. So plus 120 becomes minus 120 degrees. So angle 2 equals 180 minus 120 is 60 degrees. So let's write that down there. It's 60 degrees. Okay, so we have found angle 2. Now let's find angle 3. Now if you look at angle 3 and angle 1, can you see that they are vertically opposite angles? And what do we know about vertically opposite angles? Vertically opposite angles are equal. So let's find out angle 3. Angle 3 is equal to angle 1 because they are vertically opposite angles. That means angle 3 is equal to 120 degrees. Let's go to angle 4 now. If you look at angle 4 and angle 2, they are again vertically opposite angles. And what do we know about vertically opposite angles? They are equal. So angle 4 is equal to angle 2. And angle 4 is equal to, what is the value of angle 2? It's 60 degrees. So we have found the value of angle 4 also. So now we have found the value of angle 2. It is 60 degrees. Angle 3 is 120 degrees. And angle 4 is 60 degrees. Now let's find angle 5. If you look at angle 5 and angle 4, they are co-interior angles. Angles 5 and 4 are co-interior co angles. And what do we know about co-interior angles? They are supplementary. That means they are equal to 180 degrees. So angles 5, we are finding out angle 5. So we write that first. Angle 5 plus angle 4 together should give us 180 degrees. So let's find angle 5. Now, what is the value of angle 4? We found out earlier it's 60 degrees. Together, they should add up to 180 degrees. So angle 5 is equal to 180 degrees. Now, I move the plus 60 degrees to the right-hand side. It becomes minus 60 degrees. So now angle 5 equals 180 minus 60 which is 120 degrees. So we found angle 5. Now let's go to angle 6. Angle 6 and angle 4. There are other ways also of finding out. Let's look for the easier way. Angle 6 and angle 4 are interior alternate angles. 4 and 6 are interior alternate angles and interior alternate angles are equal. 
So we're going to write angle 6 is equal to angle 4. Why? Because they are both interior alternate angles and interior alternate angles are equal. So angle 6 is equal to, what is the value of angle 4? 60 degrees. So angle 6 is equal to 60 degrees. Let's write down whatever we have found. Angle 6 is 60 degrees. Angle 5 we found is 120 degrees. Okay, now let's go on to angle 7. Angle 7 and angle 5. Can you see that? Angle 7 and angle 5 are vertically opposite angles. 5 and 7 are vertically opposite angles and vertically opposite angles are equal. So angle 7 is equal to angle 5. Why? Because vertically opposite angles are equal. So angle 7 is equal to, what is the value of angle 5? It's 120 degrees. So let's write that down, 120 degrees. Now look at angle 8. Angle 8 and angle 6 are vertically opposite angles. That means vertically opposite angles are equal. We can also say angle 8 and angle 7. They are angles on a straight line. Linear pair equal to 180. There are many ways of finding this. We can say angle 8 and angle 4 are corresponding angles. And we know that corresponding angles are equal. We can also say angle 8 and angle 2. Can you see angle 8 and angle 2? They are exterior alternate angles and they are also equal. So we'll choose the easiest angle 8 and angle 6 are vertically opposite angles. So we'll write, write that down. Angle 8 is equal to angle 6 because vertically opposite angles are equal. Therefore, what is the value of angle 8? The value of angle 8 is 60 degrees. Okay, so we'll write that down here, 60 degrees. So now if you look at this figure, we have found the value of all the angles. What was given to us was only 120 degrees, but we found the value of all the other angles. Question 3. In the figure given alongside, find the measure of the angles denoted by X, Y, Z, P, Q and R. Okay. So now let's start with angle X. So I have angle X here and I have this 100 degree which is already given to us. Let's see if these two angles are related in any way. If you look carefully, you will see that these two are angles that lie on a straight line. And they are also known as a linear pair of angles. And linear pair of angles will be equal to 180 degrees. That means Angle X plus 100 degrees should be equal to 180 degrees. So to find angle X, we will leave 180 degrees as it is on the right hand side. We will move plus 100 degrees to the right hand side and it now becomes minus 100 degrees. So angle X is equal to 180 degrees minus 100, which is 80 degrees. So we have found the value of angle X. Let me write it there, 80 degrees. Now we'll go on to angle Z, Y. Before Z, we'll go to Y. Now look at angle Y here. It's right here. And look at angle X here. Is there any relation between angle Y and angle X? If you look carefully, you will see that they are both exterior alternate angles. Angle X and Y are exterior alternate angles and exterior alternate angles are equal. That means angle Y should be equal to angle X. Why? Because they are exterior alternate angles. So now let's find the value of angle Y. Angle X we've already found to be 80 degrees. That means angle Y is also 80 degrees. 
So we've got angle Y to be 80 degrees. Now let's look at angle Z. So we finished with X, we finished with Y. Now let's look at angle Z. Angle Z is here. Now if you look at angle Z and let's take 100 degrees, you will see that they are corresponding angles. Angle Z and 100 degrees are corresponding angles. That is one way of finding. Another way of finding out is angle Y and angle Z are linear pair of angles. So they should add up to 180. Now we will take this one that is corresponding angles are equal. Z and 100 degrees are corresponding angles. So angle Z is equal to 100 degrees. So angle X is 80, angle Y is 80 and angle Z is 100 degrees. Now let's go on to the next part. So before that let's write it down. Angle X is 80 degrees, angle Y is 80 degrees and angle Z is 100 degrees. Now we're going to find angle P. Okay, so we finished X, Y, Z. Now let's start with P, Q, R. So this is angle P. Now, is there any relation between angle P and angle X? If you see, they are vertically opposite angles. And vertically opposite angles are equal. Now, that is one way of finding out. Another way of finding out is, if you look at P and 100, they are a linear pair of angles. They should add up to 180. You can also look at angle P and angle Y. They are corresponding angles and corresponding angles are equal. So there are different ways of finding out. So one way here is P and X are vertically opposite angles and vertically opposite angles are equal. That means I'll write it down like this. Angle P is equal to angle X. So angle P is equal to how much? X is 80 degrees. So let me write 80 here. So we found out angle P. Now let's go on to angle Q. Now angle Q is here. Okay. And we have 100 degrees on the other side, vertically opposite, opposite Q. That means vertically opposite angles are equal. That is one way of finding out. Or you can say Q and X are a linear pair of angles. Q and P are a linear pair of angles. You can use any of these properties to find the value of Q. So we will use this property that vertically opposite angles are equal. Therefore, angle Q will be equal to 100 degrees. So we have found the value of angle Q to be 100 degrees. Let's write it down here, 100 degrees. Now we have to look at angle R which is here, okay? So I have angle R there and I can do it in different ways. I can have angle R and angle Q, they will be corresponding angles or I can take angle R and angle 100, they will be exterior alternate angles or I can take angle R and angle Y, they will be a linear pair of angles. So you can use any one of these properties. So we will use a property that says they are corresponding angles. That is angle R and angle Q are corresponding angles. Therefore, angle R should be equal to angle Q. And angle R, we've written it here. What is the value of angle Q? 100 degrees. So now we have found the value of all the angles asked. Here we have angle P is 80, angle Q is 100, and angle R is 100 degrees. So we will stop at that. And in the next video, we will do exercise 18D, questions 4 and 5. Thank you, children.